Hello everyone, I'm International Master Siddharth Ravi Chandran and welcome to Chess Hours. In today's video, we are going to look at the powerful trump of the opening from the white side. And it starts with the moves d4, knight of 6 and bishop g5. At the end of this video, you'll be able to learn key plans and ideas for white in this opening, the theory and three you will understand the transition from the opening to the middle game through the selected model games that we will be looking at. So first about this opening, the English Grandmaster Julian Hodgson was the one who popularized this opening. He played a lot of games with Whiteside and he has a very good score in this opening. So if you are looking at a particular player to study this opening, Julian Hodgson would be your man. And this opening has been played by a lot of world champions. Against d4, knight of 6, bishop g5, black actually has six main responses. One is the pawn move to g6, the other one is pawn to e6, the other one is pawn to d6, the other one is pawn to e5, the other one is pawn to c5, and the sixth one is the main line, which is knight to e4. So we will be looking at each of these moves with a model game as well as the theory to play this with the white pieces. First, let us look at a game between the English Grandmaster Michael Adams versus Gary Kasparov and this game was played in the year 1993 when Gary was at his prime. So, Michael Adams started with d4, and Kasparov played knight of 6 and Adams played bishop g5. And just by looking at this move, you can see the intent behind White's move. The bishop on g5 wants to capture the knight on f6. And by doing that, you will be ruining black's pawn structure. So let's go ahead and see how this game went. Um, so in general, Gary prefers bishops over knights. So he does not mind the pawn doubling that much. And here Gary goes ahead and plays the move on d6. And here, Adams does not hesitate, he goes ahead and captures this knight. And Gary recaptures with a pawn. So in this position, he has to understand a very important point. The dark squared bishop of white has been traded off. So white would be weak at the dark square. So what do you need to do? You have to place your pawns on the dark squares so that your remaining bishop is a good bishop. So Adams goes ahead and starts with e3. So now, if you put a pawn in the dark square, you notice that it is controlling more dark squares. And your bishop would be controlling the light squares, so they would be complementing each other. So that's the idea behind any opening. You have to try to control as many squares as you can. So that's what Adams does here. He starts with e3, and Casper goes f5, Adams goes g3. So he wants to fiancate to his bishop and put the bishop on the long diagonal where it would exert pressure on the b7 pawn. This long diagonal is a wonderful diagonal for the bishop to be placed on. So Gary goes ahead and plays g6 and Adams goes bishop g2 and Casper also goes bishop g7. And notice that your bishop on g2 is exerting pressure on the pawn on b7. It is not allowing black's queen side to be developed so easily. And white goes knight e2. You do not want to block your bishop, so you want to develop your knight on e2. Black goes knight d7. White goes c4. And black goes knight f6. And white goes knight bc3. Black castles and white castles. And black goes rook d8. So now let's take stock of what has happened. You can see that black has, black has double pawns and he has double bishops. That is, white has a good pawn structure and his minor pieces are well developed. So just by looking at this position, you can say that white's pawns are pointing towards the queen side and white has more space on the queen side. So it would be more natural for you to attack on the queen side where you have more space. It's, it's always good to attack on the side where you are stronger. You do not want to attack on the side where you are weaker. So you are stronger on the queen side. So that is where you want to attack. So white's plan is very clear. So just uh, for you to understand what is going on, let me just flip the board for a minute so that you can look at what is going on on black side. So if you look at it from black's point of view, you no 
notice that the plan is not too clear. What exactly black is going to do? It's not too clear. Is black going to play on the king's side? If yes, what is he going to do? Or is black going to play on the queen's side? Again, what is he going to do? So, the problem for black is, is he's actually lacking a plan and he does not know what to do. So, that's the reason white has a definite advantage in this position. Okay. So now let's get back to the game. Let me flip the board once again. Adams played queen c2. This is a minor inaccuracy. A better move would have been to play queen d3 directly. So all that you need to know is queen d3 and it is plus equals. White has a firm advantage. So let's quickly go through the game and see how Adams plays this game. So Adams starts with queen c2. Black goes c6. And Adam starts b4. So what you want to do with the white pieces is you want to make this bishop more and more powerful. In order to do that, you notice that there are two pawns in the way of this bishop. So you need to play b5 and if possible, you push a pawn all the way to a6 and get rid of these two pawns. Once these pawns are removed, the bishop is much, much stronger. And this bishop will actually win the game for you. So this is the white side here and it's very transparent. So in this game, Kasparov goes bishop e6 and now Adams goes queen d3. And now you can understand why queen d3 earlier is a better move compared to queen c2. But still white has the advantage. So in this position Kasparov played knight e4 and Adams continues with knight f4. Kasparov plays d5 and pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. And now we have noticed this pawn is very weak. It is being supported by a bishop and the bishop again looks very ugly. All the pawns are on light squares and the bishop is actually doing the role of a pawn. So it's it's not good. So Adams goes rook f c1. Casper goes queen d7. Adams plays rook c2. Middle game it's in, and end game it's not too uh, important, it, it's just a bit trivial. Yeah, Castro goes bishop at 6 and Adams goes knight e2. So Adams keeps on improving, bishop f8 and a3. And Castro plays a5. Castro is somehow trying to get some sort of activity out of the position, but Adams does not give in. He plays b5. White goes with h4, just in case black plays g5, so white wants to stop any sort of nonsense. Black plays rook c8, black wants to trade off pieces. Adams is also fine with trading the pieces. And Adams goes knight c3. You have to note that black cannot play bishop takes a3 because white can do knight takes e4. You have to notice that black cannot play bishop takes a3 because white can play knight takes e4. So, Casper plays bishop takes f4 and now you notice that after he takes f4, there is just no comparison between the bishops. Bishop on e6 is ugly and bishop on g2 looks awesome. Yeah, Casper goes rook c4 and Adams just retreats the bishop. Queen d6 and queen e3. And the bishop on f1 is attacking the rook, so the rook has to retreat. And now Adams goes knight a2. The knight has beautiful square, which is the b4 square. So Casper takes, Adams retreats takes, rook c8 and they trade off all the rooks and king g2, bishop e6, f3, you get rid of this knight on e4 and then queen c3. Now you occupy the open file. And Casper goes bishop d7, knight b4, queen e7 and queen d2 and Adams goes ahead and asks for a queen trade as well. And Casper obliges and they have a queen trade and now you notice that the white knight when it comes to c3 can attack the a4 and d5 pawns. So knight a2 was played, knight e8, knight c3, knight d6. So black somehow manages to hold on. If white takes any of these pawns, black will capture the pawn on b5. So here Adams goes king f2 and Casper blunders with king e7. And knight takes b5 check, king retreats, knight c3, and now it's, it's clearly the name for white. So white just improves his position, h6, king d2, b6 again, king e3, 
and e5. So now white king wants to go king d4 and king e5 and enter into black's position. So king c7 was played, king d4 and black has to play f6. And white goes knight takes a4, bishop takes pawn. And you do not want to do bishop takes bishop. So instead, Adams just retreats the bishop. Castro does bishop takes knight, bishop takes, and it looks like a fortress. But it actually does not. It, it's a clear win for white. So bishop c6, king here, Adams goes a4, king here. And now you notice that the only pawn which is preventing white's entry is the f6 pawn. It is preventing white from entering the e5 square. So all that you need to do is get rid of it. So Adams goes g4, king here, and g5. And in this position, Casper resigned. I hope you enjoyed this game. Let's move on. So by looking at the Michael Adams versus Casper game, we understand how to play against the moves. b4, knight of 6, bg5, and d6, which was played by Casper in the game. And you should go ahead and capture the knight. And when black recaptures, then you need to put your pawns on the dark squares. So you need to go e3, and then you go g3, and you fianc it to your bishop and put it on the long diagonal. So remember, you should put your bishop on this diagonal, and you need to put your minor pieces on knight e2, c4, and knight c3. Remember, you have to put your bishop on g2, your knight on e2, and the other knight on c3. This is the position that you are aiming for. And you have to play on the queen side by pushing your pawns b4, a4, b5, and that's the way to go. And this is considered plus equal. So just by looking at it, you have you can play the same against another line as well, which is against bishop g5. And when black plays g6, you can continue with bishop takes f6, e takes f6, and you can again start with if black plays bishop g7, you can continue with the same g3. Castles, bishop g2, and you can continue with the same there. And if black plays d6, it converts to the uh, Adams Casper game. But just in case black pushes his pawn to d5, in that case, I would suggest you to go knight e2. And if black plays c6, I want you to go knight d2, and then go ahead and play c4. And the plan is basically the same white goes ahead and castles on the king side and plays on the queen side. And it's very comfortable position for white. And I would say it's a plus equals for white. So right now we have covered how to play against bishop g5, g6, as well as bishop g5, d6. So we have covered two main moves. But let's move on. Next, I would like to take you through the line d4, knight f6, bishop g5, and e6. So when black plays e6, you notice that a pin has been created against the black's queen. So you can utilize this and try to occupy the center by pushing your pawn to e4. So this is the main move over here. You get a nice center. So basically every move has an advantage and a drawback. So when you are playing e4, you notice that your pawn is being attacked by the knight. So black can actually play the move h6 over here. And when black plays h6, you realize that you cannot play bishop h4. Problem is, black would play g5 and you would be losing your e4 pawn. So, when black plays h6, white is forced to capture the knight with bishop takes f6 and black does queen takes f6. And in this position, ex world champion Vishwanathan Anand played the move knight c3 and he defeated Anatoly Karpo in the FIDE World Championship tournament back in 1998. So at that point of time, knight c3 was very popular. I'll go ahead and give you this game between Anand and Amtoli Karpo in the description below. Anand played a very nice game and he defeated Karpo with the Trompovsky. So you can go ahead and check it out. Earlier, knight c3 was the main move, but late on, c3 became the main line. c3 is much comfortable compared to the move knight c3. So the advantage of c3 is when you play c3, you're putting more pawns on the dark squares. So you do not have a dark square bishop, so that fits in very logically and it defends your d4 pawn. I will go ahead and show you the further plans after c3. So right now I'm going to show you one of my own games, which I played against uh, Armenian Grandmaster Gewag Harit Chunyan. And in this game, uh, black played d6. So I was playing white over here 
and Givar Kharutinian, he played d6 here, and I played bishop d3. Now this position basically white's plan is to go knight e2 and then go f4 and then castles. Now afterwards you might even think about playing the move e5. This, this looks like a wonderful position for white. So this is the idea behind white's move bishop d3. In, in this game Kharutinian he played e5 and I played knight e2 as per the plan. And Karutinian played bishop to e7 and I cast it. So next move is f4. So Karutinian played the move knight c6 and he is putting pressure on the pawn on d4. I had calculated it and I went ahead and played the move f4. You might be wondering what happens if black captures the pawn on d4. So let me just show it to you. So in the game, yeah, Karutinian did play e takes d4 and I recaptured with c takes d4. So in this version, Karutinian played the move bishop g4. So you might be wondering what happens if black captures the pawn on d4. So if knight takes d4, basically knight takes d4, black would do queen takes d4 and there is a check on the king. So instead of doing knight takes knight, white has a much stronger option. And when you do queen a4 check, black is forced to retreat the knight because the knight on d4 is under attack and now white can do knight c3. And now you notice that the knight is coming to this excellent square d5 and black cannot prevent it. Black can try a move like bishop e6, but white still goes knight d5. And you notice that if they do pawn takes and if they do bishop takes knight, you can just recapture the pawn and this knight is falling. That's the reason black did not capture on d4. So instead black played the move bishop g4. I played the move d5. And black played bishop takes e2. And I took back to the queen. And black played knight b4. And I played queen e3. And in this position, Haritinian realized that this position is not too comfortable. The pieces are not doing well and it, it's not clear what he means. So here he tried to complicate the issue. He played the move g5. His idea is if white does the move pawn takes pawn, then black would play the move queen e5. And suddenly you realize that the queen is sitting on a wonderful square. The queen cannot be pushed out. And next move, black is threatening to go bishop g5. And since my king is over here, black would try to play rook g8. And by sacrificing a pawn, he is able to open up the lines against my king. So that's the reason he played the move g5. And here, the more simplest way to get an advantage for white is to play the move knight a3. And the idea behind knight a3 is later you can go knight b5, uh, force him to trade the knights with knight takes, and you do bishop takes. And the other idea is if he does pawn takes pawn and you take with the rook, and if the queen comes to e5, later on you can use the knight to come to the square c4 and attack the queen. So knight a3 and it's a clear plus minus. White is completely winning, but instead in the game I was tempted by the move e5. It looks very natural, so I went ahead and played the move e5, and my opponent took the pawn, and I just recaptured, and he played queen b6. So now he's threatening something like knight e2 check, and I cannot take it. So if I play something like king f2, he would further do bishop c5, and the queen is lost. So that's his threat, and I had seen this earlier, so I thought I would go ahead and play the move king h1 here. This is what happened in the game, and when I played King H1, he came up with a brilliant move. If you want to think like a grandmaster, if you want to find out the move played by a grandmaster, I want you to pause the video and think for yourself. So first, you flip the board, look at it from the black side, and try to find out the move played by black. Okay. So I'm going to give you five seconds. So five, four, three, two. Hope you have found the move. So the move played by black over here is knight b3, an excellent move. And suddenly you, re you realize that white cannot do queen takes queen because black will just recapture the pawn and you are losing the rook. And you cannot capture the knight also because you are losing the queen. So no matter what you play, white is losing the exchange. So I, I, I had completely missed this move. When he played it, I was completely dumbfounded. 
but luck or i'm not sure what you would call it i was able to keep myself calm and i went ahead and tried to search for the opportunity so let me just go ahead and flip the board so now it's my turn i realized that i cannot do queen takes queen i mean if i trade off the queens i do not have anything and i'm just lost and i'm an exchange down and there is nothing for me over here but if you look at the game from the start you can notice that white has been following the opening principles so white has castled white has brought his pieces out white has opened up the center white has brought his pawns towards the center white has been doing everything correct does white deserve a punishment like this suddenly no so suddenly i realized that the black king is still in the center and i have followed the opening principles and my opponent has not followed the opening principles so i should somehow try to punish him and then i found the move queen f3 so he is going to capture the rook so let me just give it away and try to attack this king and put pressure on him. so he went ahead and captured the rook up to queen f7 and even king king d8 and i played queen g7 attacking the rook so now white is a whole rook down but black's king is kind of messed up so if you look at this position uh, white needs to do something immediately before the black king escapes you have to attack him and try to punish him within the next few moves if that does not happen then black's extra rook will win the game for him eventually so black went to king 8 and i need to bring all my pieces into the attack i cannot just have a few pieces and try to go for the attack so i went knight here i mean black can try a move like queen takes b2 but it's but it is too risky all the pieces are going to attack and the queen is also deserting the king so in the game black played the move queen c5 and i proceeded with the move bishop to g6 now attacking his rook he played rook f8 and i did the move rook f7 and he played the move b5 and suddenly the white is completely winning after the move d6 you notice that the queen has been cut off from the bishop pawn is actually blocking the queen and now rook takes rook is threatened and now you notice that rook takes rook is threatened and all sorts of checkmating threats arise so in the game black player rook takes rook i did queen takes f7 needed pawn takes pawn and queen e8 check king c7 and, and queen takes a8 was played and now the material is equal and black is in a lot of trouble white's king is very safe and white's pieces are well developed black has trouble with his king and the knight is stuck on a1 white is winning completely he did pawn takes pawn i did bishop f5 he did e4 and i took it with my queen so let me just quickly go through the game so b4 was played knight check king here and yeah i went g3 just to keep an escape square for the king he went h5 and i did knight takes bishop he did queen c1 check king here g4 and now if i exchange off the queens white is winning because the knight on a1 is trapped so i went knight c6 check king here i did queen e7 if he takes the knight i would play bishop e4 check and he's in trouble so he did not take it i tried my best to trade off the queens and yeah here he did king takes e6 three check white is just winning the game black played queen takes queen pawn takes and king comes here and instead of going bishop d3 and trying to trap the knight i felt this was much easier so i went bishop g6 so i realized that if i went bishop d3 black would do a5 and he would do this more knight b3 check and the knight escapes so i decided not to trap the knight but instead i can go ahead and capture the king side pawns by playing bishop g6 and black played king c4 bishop takes on bishop takes g4 and after this white is just winning. Pawns just, the pawns are unstoppable. White, white just keeps pushing the pawns and after h5, knight d5 and h6, black resigned. So just a quick recap of what you need to do when your opponent goes d4, knight f6, b g5 and your opponent plays e6. So when your opponent plays e6, you need to play the move e4. The drawback of the move e6 is it allows a pin on the queen, so you capture the center by pushing your pawn to e4. And black would play h6. Uh, just remember, if your opponent does not play h6 and instead he plays a move like bishop e7, you can just ignore it and develop your bishop to d3. There is no necessity for you to give your bishop now. 
So only if you place H6, you, you can go ahead and capture it. Otherwise, just keep developing normally. So when you place H6, you take it. And remember, you have to play the move C3 over here. C3 is the modern mainline, and it, it is very solid compared to the older mainline, which is Knight C3. And the plan for white is I place Bishop D3, and then white goes Knight D2, white goes F4, castles, and E5. This is white's plan. So, I hope you are clear with this move, e6. Let's go on with the next move. Next, we are going to look at a sideline for black in the same bishop g5 e6 system. So, e4, knight of 6 bishop g5, e6. And when white plays e4, instead of playing h6, black has this option, c5. So, the idea is if white plays e5 over here, black is then going to play h6. And if bishop h4, then he's going to play g5. So, this is not too great for white. When black plays c5, white has a much stronger move, which is the move d5. And there are quite a lot of games in this line. So, Fabiano Caruana played this against Maxi Marshal Lagra with the white pieces. Ali Reza Feroza played the same line against Ivan So, I'm going to show you a few moves from the games. So, both of them played d5. Black played pawn takes pawn and e5 was played. In this version, if black plays the move hit 6, white can actually do e takes f6. And if black takes the bishop, white has this nice move queen e2 check. Black would be down a piece. So h6 is not good over here. So for e5, black has to play queen e7. And for queen e7, uh, Fabiano Caruana versus Maxime Vashilaga went with the move knight f3 and black played the move hit 6. And Fabiano did bishop takes knight, pawn takes, and even knight c3. Pawn takes pawn, knight d5, queen d6. And this is a great position for white. White has a huge advantage, and somehow Fabiano made some mistakes and he actually lost the game. But this position gives white a huge advantage. Instead, black could do better than this. When black played the move hit 6, in, black can play the move knight c6 which still gives quite the advantage. But instead of knight f3, that is actually an even stronger move, which, which is the move f4. And this was actually played by Ali Reza Ferosa against Ivanchuk. And here Ivanchuk played queen e6. And for queen e6, Ali Reza in his game played the move knight e2, which is not so great. Instead, that is a much stronger move, which is the move knight c3. So the idea behind this move is you are not allowing the knight on f6 to move away. Because you are attacking the pawn on d5. If the knight moves, you can capture the pawn on d5. So, black has to play d4 and you can go knight b5. And now you are threatening this move knight c7. Black can play knight a6, but knight is in a horrible square. So, black can do king d8. And white can just continue with knight f3. h6 and bishop h4. And if they play g5, you can just do f takes g5. And white has a clear advantage. So, so I will I will give the links for both these games in the description. Caruana versus Maxime Vashalagra and Ali Reza versus Ivancha. So you can go ahead and check out the games over there. Just a quick recap. If they play c5, you have to push your pawn to d5. And when they take it, you can play e5 now. The huge difference is the e5 is now open when you play queen e2. And for queen e7, you can play either knight of 3 or f4. Whichever suits you, you can go ahead and play. My suggestion is to move f4, but if you do not like f4, you can go ahead and play knight f3. That is still very good for it. So, next we are going to look at this line where black plays d4, knight f6, bishop g5, and black plays the move d5. So, this move d5 is considered to be a very solid option for black. So, black does not mind the doubling of the pawns, but he is concerned about the center. He wants to occupy the center. So, we are going to follow a game between the world champion Vladimir Kramnik versus uh, the grandmaster Vladislav Takiev. And this was played in the year 2008. And Kramnik played an amazing game. Kramnik did bishop takes f6. And in this game, black played e takes f6. There is another option where black can play g takes f6. We will cover that later. So let's first look at e takes f6. White plays e3. And again, remember, you have given up your dark squared bishop. So you need to put your pawns on the dark squares. 
so that your remaining light square bishop becomes a good bishop. So yeah, e3, black plays bishop d6, c4, b takes c4, bishop takes c4, castles, knight c3, and in this game, Vladislav Takiev played the move pawn to c6. Here I would like to show you a nice trap for white. Black plays a move like c5. Actually, I had won a game with the white pieces against an international master. So he played the move c5 and I captured the pawn. And he did bishop takes pawn unknowingly. And here lies the trap. White has a very nice move which wins a pawn, which is me. Bishop takes our son check. And here you realize that black cannot take with the rook because queen is hanging. The rook is supporting the queen, so the rook needs to stay there. And black is forced to take with the king. And white has this nice check. Queen h5 check. King, no matter what black is, you are going to capture the bishop next. And white has just one of free pawn. And white has a clear advantage. So just remember this trick. If someone plays c5, go ahead and capture the pawn and then you take on f7. So in this game, Vlad is going to play c6. After c6 by Vlad, Kramnik played knight f3. And Black played f5. And Black would like to play f4 and somehow get rid of his stocky pawns. In this position, Kramnik played queen c2. So this is the plan that I want you to follow. Black played knight b7. White cannot capture the pawn on f5 because Black would play knight e5. And that's a discovered attack on the queen. So Kramnik played bishop d3. And Black played g6. And now the bishop is literally biting on the granite. There are three pawns in the way of the bishop. White has a wonderful way to attack this. So Kramnik starts attacking with move h4. Black played queen e7 and he continues h5. Black plays knight f6. And he goes ahead and takes the pawn. H takes g6, f takes g6. And now the rook is in the attack. Just attacking the h seven pawn and it has a wonderful open file. Kramnik continues with bishop c4 check, bishop e6, bishop takes bishop, queen takes, and knight g5. So now the knight and rook are in the attack. Black queen goes to c4. And now, if it's possible, I want you to pause your video and try to figure out this wonderful move played by Kramnik. Please go ahead, pause the video, think for yourself. Try to find out the move. So now the move played by Kramnik over here is this wonderful move. Pawn to g4. I hope you found this. So what you can notice is if black plays f takes g4, then white can win the game by rook takes and so the next move you have queen takes g6 check. And then you have queen takes and seven check if the rook is captured. And similarly, if black captures on g4 with the knight. You can directly take on that seven. And this opens up black's king side even further. And the black king is very weak. So g4 is an excellent move by Kramer. So black played the move. Bishop, g, bishop b4. So black is trying to attack white's weak spot. And Kramnik just went to g takes f5. And Vladislav Takiev played the move knight d5. So he's putting pressure on the c3 knight. And again, a wonderful move by Kramnik. He does not care about this. He just continues with the attack. F takes g6. Excellent move. And black played knight takes knight. And Kramnik took with the pawn. So if black plays bishop takes c3, you just move your king. And the queen on c4 is in a pin. So black played queen takes c3. Queen takes, bishop takes, king e2. And black won an exchange with bishop takes a1. But White has this intermediate move, g takes h7 check, king h8 and rook takes a1. So now if you look at this position, Kramnik is an exchange down, but he has two pawns in return. And the pawn on h7 cannot be touched. The knight on g5 is defending it and further white can play f4 and defend the knight. So all these pieces are unshakable unless black needs to sacrifice the exchange back. So let's quickly look at how the game continues. Black played rook f8, f4, rook e8, threatening rook takes f4, so Kramnik played king f3, c5, e4, and here black decided to go back the exchange with rook takes c5, f takes g5, c takes d4, 
and G6. So black goes king G7 and Kramnik goes to rook H1. So if the pawn on G6 is taken, pawn on H8 would be. So black has to play rook H8. So Kramnik had calculated this to perfection. He played B5. And black takes on G6. Now he goes king B4. And takes on H7. Takes, takes, king takes, king here. King F7, king B6. So if white gets one more move, white is going to play king B7. So black's reply is forced. Black played king E8, king C7, 5, and white played A4, stopping the pawn. King E7, king takes, king D6, king D6, takes, takes, king D6, king D6, and the king is just in time to stop black's king from coming any closer to the white pawn. So, so in this position, black is end. So let's have a quick recap of the opening moves. So d4 and knight of 6, bishop g5, d5, and you take the knight. And it's game black recaptured with takes f6, and you play the move e3. And next move, you are going to play c4. Black get bishop d6, you go ahead and play c4. Pawn takes pawn, bishop takes, castles, knight c3. And remember, you have this trick. If black plays c5, you can do d take c5 and then bishop takes f7 check. So just have, have an eye out for that move. So in this game, black played c6. And in the olden days, they used to play knight f3 and castle on the king side, but the Kramnik played this nice idea knight f3, f5, and he goes queen c2. So he's going to castle on the queen side and then he's going to attack on the king side. Knight d7, bishop d3. And g6 and then comes to h4. Queen e7 and h5. Okay. So if you are playing the opening, you would need to know until lower, until this push. And white has a nice push, and white has the advantage. Let's move on to the next line, and which is d4, knight f6, bishop g5, d5. And when you capture on f6, black takes with the g pawn, g takes f6. So when he does g takes f6, it is important that you play c4 immediately. Otherwise, if you play a move like e3, then Black would play c5, and that kind of gives them a nice position. So you would have to be a bit passive in such a scenario. So instead of playing e3, when he plays g takes f6, immediately lash out with c4. Black might do d takes c4, and as usual, you play e3. You put your pawn on the dark squares because you have a light square position. Black has two options. Black can play rook, c8, rook g8, or the move c5. So first, let's look at rook g8. If they do rook g8, you just have rook normally. You play knight c3, black plays c6, you go knight f3, and if black plays b5, you can just go a4. Bishop b7, and here white has this nice move, g3. Black can play a5 and bishop g2, and white has a nice advantage. Because the pawns over here, they are pretty weak. So if black pushes b4, then the c4 pawn becomes very weak, or else you can just castle and your king is very safe, that's the most important point. White's king is very safe, whereas black's king, it, it is unsure where he's going to place his king. The other move, which is c5, can be played. So if they play c5, I want you to go ahead and play the move. Bishop takes c4, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. But just for information, if they play a move like rook g8 now, you can go ahead and play queen h5. This is a little bit uncomfortable for black. So they might want to play bishop g7, and then you would want to develop your knights normally. Knight c3 and knight e2. Because black might try to pin your knight by playing bishop g4, so knight e2 looks a little more solid. Black might play knight c6, and you go queen d2, f5, and rook d1. So, black's king is slightly a bit exposed, and white has a solid position. Bishop d7 and castles. And I would say white has a slight advantage over here. So, this is the line that I would suggest for g takes f6. So, now we can go ahead with the next move. Next, we are going to look at the move for black, which is d4 and knight f6, bishop g5, c5. So, c5 is a move which says that white has moved the bishop away from the b2 pawn. So black is trying to play c5 and bring the queen to b6 and put pressure on the b2 pawn. And this 
is one of the lines which I like to play with the white pieces. Why? Because the white actually can play the more d5. And when black plays the more queen b6, white has this wonderful gambit called as the Vaganian gambit. Vaganian gambit is played by the grandmaster of Hal Vaganian. He popularized it. And it is a very good opening for the white pieces. You get lots of compensation for a pawn. So let's go ahead and see how this gambit continues. So white plays the move knight c3. And you are gambiting the b2 pawn. That plays queen takes b2. You realize that you cannot play queen d2 or you cannot move your knight again. But instead you have to drop your bishop back to d2. Bishop d2. And you might ask what's so great about this opening. But let me show you the subsequent moves. So black retreats the queen back to b6. And now you get to play e4. So in return for the sacrifice pawn, you have completely occupied the center. So black can play e5 and white can play f4. Black plays the move d6 over here. This position knight f3 is the more popular move. And you can see lots of games played with the move knight f3. But when I was checking this position with an engine, top position, it is giving the move f5 as plus minus. The reason it is saying that white has a big advantage is because white's pieces have a lot of space, whereas black is completely cramped. So if black plays a move like g6, white can play g4. And if black plays h5, you can play g5. And you are just completely crushing down black's uh, defense. So let me just flip the board on the black side for you. So just look at it from the black side. Your pieces can hardly come out. For one pawn, this is way too much compensation. You, you do not want to play like this from black pieces. f5 gives white a great advantage. And if they play g6, go ahead and play g. I want you all to just go ahead and analyze this move f5 further with your with your engine and see what it says. I'm going to end the analysis over here. f5 and white has a huge advantage. The rest is up to you to take it further. So next we are going to look at the final move, which is the main line. We have g5 and black plays knight e4. So for knight e4, white has three different options. White can play bishop h4. I can play bishop f4 and the move on to h4. Out of these three lines, bishop f4 is the main line, and I this is the move which I am recommending for white. And when you play bishop f4, black has two moves. The main line is the move c5. Black is trying to bring the queen to b6 and attack the pawn on b2. And instead of c5, black has a solid option as well, where he plays pawn to b5. So first, let's cover pawn to d5. So if black plays d5. There are quite a different number of ways for white to play. White can play e3, bishop d3, try to capture the knight. Or white can play knight d2 and do something. Or the third option which I'm going to recommend is the move f3 over here. And when black plays knight f6, I would suggest the move knight c3 over here. So white's idea is to push the pawn to e4. So most probably black would try to stop it by playing the move bishop f5. If black if white plays a move like e6, you can go ahead and push your pawn forward. And white is doing fine. If, if he plays a move like something like bishop d4, you can go ahead and play queen d3. And next move, you can castle on the queen side. Instead of playing e6, black might play bishop f5, trying to prevent you from playing e4. In that case, white can actually do the move g4 over here. When black goes bishop g6, you can actually expand on the king side with h4. So remember, you are going to castle on the queen side, so you can go ahead and attack on the king side freely. So white is now planning to push the pawn to h5 and trap the bishop, so black has to play h5 or h6. In that case, you play g5, and you get further control. And when the knight goes back, just by looking at the board, you can see white has made so many moves on the board, whereas black has made only three moves. Apparently, d5, h5, and maybe bishop f5, bishop d6, so let's say four moves. So it looks like white is ahead by a lot of moves. So you can just continue with e4. e6 and in a game where Jabawa Badu was playing with the white pieces, he played e takes d5, e takes d5 and queen e2 check. After knight e7, he just castled on the queen side. And after c6, he went bishop takes 3. White has a clear advantage. So just a quick recap. After bishop g5, if they go knight e4, you have to drop your bishop back to f4. Like a London system. You can play the move d5. In that case, you go f3, attacking the knight. When the knight goes away, you go knight c3. And now you're threatening to play e4. So that is pretty much it about the d5 system. 
Next, we are going to look at the main line, which is d4 in id f6, bishop g5 in id4, and bishop f4, and black plays the move c5. And for c5, white has two main options. White can play pawn to f3, kicking the knight out, or white can play, push the pawn to d5. I'm going to suggest the move pawn to d5 over here. And black plays queen b6. Queen b6, black is actually highlighting the point that the bishop has moved away from c1 and the pawn on b2 is under attack. So now white plays a very unusual move. White just brings the bishop back to c1. c1 looks hilarious. You, you are undeveloping the only piece which has been developed already. But this move has some venom to it. So the idea is next two moves white is going to play f3 followed by e4 and this cannot be stopped white is going to grab the center in the next two moves and white's argument is that knight on e4 is actually helping white to gain tempo by playing f3 and e4 and the other argument of white is that the queen on b6 is not well placed so white says that black would need to attack on the queen side by playing b5 and his own queen is actually hindering his way of attack so even though bishop c1 is played, white feels that he is ahead in development. Let's look at a game played by none other than the great Gary Kasparov in the same line. And you will get an idea as to how to play this line. So in this game, black played e6, white played f3, black played knight f6, and white played c4. Black played d6, white played e4. This was played by Gary in a simultaneous display. And he played knight c3. And he just developed this piece as normal, knight g2. And here, Gary goes ahead and plays the move queen c2. And now you can notice that the queen on b6 is actually a hindrance. It is not allowing black to play b5, which is this way of attack or opening up the game. So he goes a6, Gary goes bishop e3, and now the queen drops back to c7. And now, Casper goes g4. Nice. So Gary's gaining space on both sides of the board. Black played b5 and remember white cannot capture the pawn because black would push the pawn to c4. The bishop on d3 is under attack so Gary just played b3 over here. And pawn takes and pawn takes. And you can see that white has a huge space advantage on both sides of the board and in the center. Rook b8, knight g3 and Gary goes knight f5. Knight f8 and castles. Black goes knight g6, knight e2, and he's just covering the f4 square. Black played bishop d7, and knight takes bishop, knight takes, and h4. b4 and bishop e2. So, even though it's an open file, the, there is nothing for the rooks over there. So, we just drop back and rook a b1. Takes, takes, and now Gary goes to b1. Everything is exchanged. White went on to win this game. So just to give you a quick recap of this opening. So when black plays knight e4, you go bishop f4. And the main line is the move c5. And remember, whenever your opponent plays c5, just go ahead and push the pawn to d5. Even when they directly play c5, we are going to push the pawn to d5. That's how you get the backhand in gambit. And even if they go knight e4, Bishop f4 and they play c5. Again, you just have to push your pawn to b5. And queen b6. And in this case, the Baganian gambit does not work here. You have to note that because if you play knight c3, the black knight can just take your knight. So, knight, Baganian gambit does not work for knight e4. So, you have to drop your bishop back to c1. And remember, if your opponent plays a move like c4 attacking your pawn on f2, you have to play e3. Now, you notice the drawback. The pawn on c4 is very weak. So, black would not do it. So, black in the game against Casper went e6, f3, and you go c4. And then you go e4. And you just occupy the center. And you occupy the flanks as well. So, I think this much is pretty good enough for the main line. I will go ahead and share these games with you in the link below. For the Trompowski attack, I hope you are satisfied with the video. So please feel free to leave your comments and if you want me to review any other openings or any other sidelines in this particular Trompowski attack, if you feel I have missed out, please share your thoughts and your comments. If you learn something useful from this video, please click on the like button and click on the subscribe button to watch more such videos.
Thank you.